Hey there everybody, it's the Doctor here with Typical Manga Fan, and this episode of the Typical Manga Review is dedicated to One Piece, Chapter 818, Within the Whale. And our cover page this week is Baltigo, which is Robin and by extension Luffy's group of um, family or relatives or friends and such, because we have Sabo, Koala, and Dragon. I like Dragon, it's kind of like, it's almost like he's almost trying not to care, but he really wants to see it. <laughs> That's what the impression wait, I get. Wait, wait, Robin, so we have... Luffy, well, obviously. Well, because Robin was with the revolutionaries. I know. He's just saying, like, she was... Well, she's re- in this case, I think I mentioned before, like, we've been seeing, like, the, the family members or close people to the Straw Hats. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, like, we can't necessarily revisit O'Hara. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can't, like, like yeah. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, like, I, I knew she was part of the revolutionary. I didn't think she was, like, related to any of these guys. Well, but... I'm being figurative in that case, but, like, I mean, otherwise, we're going to go to the Burning Hulk of O'Hara. Well, actually, <laughs> you might see, like... I don't. I don't know. If you want to go darker, you could see like the burnt corpses or something. Who knows? You know. Yeah. I'd rather have. I'd rather have brooding dragon over here. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder. Uh, yeah, I'm actually. I'm actually curious though, because this is actually an interesting uh, setup. Be right before they're gonna probably get attacked by Blackbeard. Yeah. Um, true. Like when I was looking at this in threads, like I guess there was like shop for, like Photoshop version of this pic that suggested like Burgess or something else was like in the, in the corner there, but obviously it's not there now. So is, is this is that's the chapter for uh, for Robin and uh, I'm not chapter the, the page for uh, Robin and Luffy's connections, right? Is yeah. That, is, that, is that it? Well, I think we had, I think we had Windmill Village for Luffy as well. So, but this oh, is like, okay. this is like Robin mainly, but Luffy extends into it because of Sabo and Dragon. Yeah. All right. So, chapter proper begins with Nin Nin Nin. <laughs> oh no! I showed my ninjutsu accidentally. Yeah. Like even though you are totally zoning it off to us. And then Chopper notices that they all seem to be crying. Nonsense! The men of Wano Wad- Wad- Kingdom felt never shed a tear. But they are upset because this nation of minks, the Mokumu Dukedom, has been pretty much ravaged because of their because of them. Yep. And it took me a while, but I, I thought there was like the building was like in some kind of like pit or valley, kind of like I think um, Amazon Lily was. But they're they're still on the whale tail, the wh- whale tree's tail. It's crazy to think how big that thing is. How big is the elephant? <laughs> well, yeah, true, but still. Um, I mean, so, as it turns out, the the pony glyph is now done translated, being translated yeah, by oh, Robin. Quick thing, um, Rizal also promises that because of all this, like, and their involvement in causing this to happen, he will, he's gonna do everything he can to make this up to them. Yeah, I think that was pretty assumed. Though. I mean, we yeah. the, things are gonna get down, so I think he's definitely going to uh, yeah. uh, do something about it, especially since he, we saw the guilt he saw uh, from last chapter. Yeah. Um, so anyway, pony glyph done, you know. Yep. And Robin is consulting Nami with this because apparently the um, writing on the pony glove comes out comes off resembling directions like a C chart. But Nami notices that it seems to be pointing to a specific location. And Cat Viper goes on to point out that this the whale forest is revered as a sacred place because of that stone, and the gar- them the guardians are tasked with protecting it. And the, the reason it's red is because it's known as what's it's commonly known as a road pony glyph. In the final point of the Grand Line, which has been endlessly sought by the stalwart warriors of the sea, this stone, this stone is a guide to that very location. And which they immediately realize means that this stone is the key to reaching Raftel. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah. It's like the final place of the Grand Line, which there is actually a minor detail here which I really liked. They don't actually regress directly, but I'll get into it later. You know you know what this reminds me of? The the, uh. four, the pieces having to find a certain location. Yeah, uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, when you get to find the temple, because you yeah. have to collect the orbs, and then they would lead you to the location of the temple. Yeah, um, or the Triforce of Courage if you're talking Wind Waker, because you have that uh, going on too. Yeah, but I think the, the Triforce of Courage is just the map for True. in terms of like locate like. It's oh yeah, you to, yeah, I see what you mean. Like when you have to put the stones into the statues. Yeah, yeah, like, and you get much. the Temple of the Gods. Also, real quick before yeah, we move right on here, up. on these. Big page, like you really, you realize, like just how big and how small everyone is compared to each other. Nice perspective shot. Like you get Rizo all stubby. Oh yeah. Like, you have Dog Storm and Cat Viper, just freaking huge. And Brook is actually hella tall. He is. And Frankie is big. is a big guy too. But the whale adds the whale hair adds a couple of inches. <laughs> yeah. Um. So everyone's like Raftel, dun 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 dun. Yep. Um. 
<laughs> I like how they're like, it's the freaking finish line. You be freaking pirate. I like, I like, you know, it's, like it's like, let's. It's just interesting because yeah. it's, it's it's like they read a spoiler. It's kind of it's really weird. Yeah, but Dog Storm is trying to kind of get through to them because there is more to it than just that one stone. Yeah, we still have a lot of chapters to go. Yep. Because as Dog Storm points out, there's four set stones. On each stone, a different kind of like we were just saying, a different point is inscribed. And once all three locations are known, each point can then be marked on a map. And on the point where they converge and intersect, that's where th that's where the destination you see equally merge. Don't know how and that's little... where we'll find the Triforce. I mean, One Piece. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. And I said, one thing I really like about this, if you think about it, this actually answers a very important question without really addressing it directly. Why was Roger able to find it and nobody else was? Because he had all four, I guess? Or he was able to have some, somehow get information from all four? Right, but even then, remember, the Pointing Cliff language is unknown. I mean, as we'll find out here, like, people have these stones, but can't do anything with them. But that's why Roger is able to do it, because we know we can understand in some way the Pointing Cliff language. Remember Skypea? He wrote in it. Like, he could, remember, like, he could hear the voice of all things, is how Rayleigh put it. Yeah, so... so... Roger, Roger is, like, the reason that Roger is the only one who could ever do this was because he was the only one who could get anything from those stones. Pretty much. Yep. And so, like I said, they're all excited about this. They're having, um... Of course, Usopp points out the obvious flaw. Like, if you don't know where the stones are, then how are you going to find them? It was like, Catfiber points out they're planning to go to Whole Cake Island, then they're already on the right path. Because of the four stones, there's only one whose location actually is not known at all. There's only one that's actually lost. They've got one, and the other two are held in the possession of the Emperors Kaido and Big Mom. I was thinking maybe that Blackbeard might, maybe it's in the, in the possession of the Revolutionary Army or Black and Blackbeard might get it or something. I was two like that. two suggestions I saw: um, Mari Joa, which could very well be that big secret Do Flamingo had holding over the Celestial Dragons, probably, or uh, the Moon. Uh, okay. Well, how about how about looking under your bed? Ever think of that? There's not the face under my bed is not big enough for a pony glyph. Who says it has to be a gigantic huge slab of stone or whatever the heck's made out of? That, that, is, could, it, that is the pattern, but at the same time, that could actually be an interesting idea. <laughs> and uh, I like I, well, interesting though. It's like yeah, the the the, the marrow. How do, you, how do you pronounce it? The place for the, the Marizoa. The, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that that thing, that place. Yeah, that actually sounds like a good um a good uh, area to find it. Although the the moon might be tricky because we have to we have to get there and right. Uh, but it would definitely justify why it's been um, lost for so long. And nobody said that these things all had to be on ground level. No, many, many of them in sea level too. <laughs> yeah, or above sea, under sea. There could we could have another sky island coming up at some point. All sorts of different possibilities open up. I mean, nobody. They know, also, real quick about where the lines intersect and cross and all that. Do you realize what that means? Do you realize what that implies? A pirate X mark. Yes, mark. X marks the spot. Oh, and exactly. It's, yeah. it's a pirate. It's a pirate mark. Come on. I do love the fact though that that's how the that X marks the spot is how you find the ultimate pirate treasure. <laughs> hey, anyway. going back to the basics is great, you know. Yep. Anyway, um, so the so the emperors have two of the stones. So Luffy's thinking, hey, that's simple. That's simple. All we gotta do is steal them. And then the weak weak trio here is like, oh god, my vision's gone black. Like Luffy starts like, don't say it like it's so matter of fact. You know, I've been tuning you out because I thought we'd be crossing that bridge a lot later. But if, are you seriously going to be picking a fight with them? They're like just on the verge of wetting themselves out of fear, basically. <laughs> but Cat Viper points out you don't actually have to steal the stones themselves because people make copies of them all the time, and there's um. So there are obviously going to be copies of the Red Pony Glyph as well in, in the Emperor's possessions. So all I got to do is steal those. Which is a very convenient thing, except that Luffy doesn't like convenience. He likes. <laughs> Talent. His face. Yeah. Uh, see, he's exactly. Like, like he's, it's, he's, that's why. It, wait, wait, wait. He's got a big old Mad Magazine face going here. <laughs> this, is, this is exactly why the whole Big Mom be, uh, trying to get Luffy to do what she wants thing is stupid. Like, we, we, all, as the audience, we know that Luffy doesn't give a shit. Yeah. You know he what? will attack everyone. Real quick, a little prediction I have because of this. Like, again, no idea if it's going to come true or not, but I really hope it does. When they do go to Whole Cake Island and they do go after Big Mom. Luffy's gonna lead a heist to steal the Red Pony Sliff. But here's the thing. You remember Jim Bay's cover story? Uh no. What is it? Well, at the end of it he found like 
what's I don't know if they actually showed it as a pony glyph, but something that's very much implied to be a pony glyph. I think, oh, yeah, I think, yeah, 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 I remember. What I want to see him do is go to Big Mom's, steal the red pony glyph, take Jim Bays and paint it red, and then leave it there. <laughs> but, because it's Luffy, it's going to be such a crude and stupid paint job that everyone will realize it immediately. <laughs> I know. That would be really good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I could just see them pulling that off in some way. Like, that would just be great. Anyway, anyway so... Now, the big important thing that we also get from the bottom panel is that Robin, the whole thing about Robin being Ruby Ponyglyphs, it makes it so that, because, you know, even though the Ponyglyphs are in a lot of places, um, or in a lot of uh, Ponyglyphs and the Ponyglyph copies are in different places, uh, very few people can read them. That makes Robin a very important uh, commodity for these uh, pirates. And so, uh, and I'm just thinking to myself, well, you know, that we all remember the whole thing with uh, Annie's Lobby. Right. So, but thankfully, as character development is a big thing in One Piece she's like nope I don't mind I got strong library friends who will be there to protect me and I love the next panel right here I love this they're all like all fired up over it especially Nami <laughs> yeah like Luffy, Luffy and Chopper and them I love Nami right here like she's she's all fired up like if they dare touch her they should consider their lives and money forfeit <laughs> hey, how many pony ghosts are out there are out there anywhere here? I don't know if we have any spe- outside of the road ones which we know they're four of I don't know if there's any specific number uh, I think he said um, countless. Like, let me see. Well, I think he says countless glyphs and copies. Okay, yeah, because that's, that's, that's what I was reading. Yeah, so I read, I read it right. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, so now, now the now conversation goes back to um, uh, Mom, 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 Momonosuke. Momonosuke's father, um, Lord Odin Kozuki, uh, and his relationship to these stones. And he's about, he's about to speak a little, say a little more, but he's, he has to check with the, uh, the. Just say Momo. No, no, not him. It was the dog first. Who's the dog? Oh, Dog Storm. The dog. What was his name again? In Japanese, it's Ino Arashi. In English, they translate it as Dog Storm. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, Momo. Oh, it's, a liter- it's a literal translation, actually. It's like a title. Yeah. Um, so Momo, uh, he asked that the dog. Dog does wants to look at Momo first, and Momo's like, "Yeah, just do it." You know. Actually, wait, real, real quick. You know how like you see like the little dawn thing that's on uh, next to the Momo right here, like the leathers on either side of him. You notice that they can't. They're kind of like you know like the you know what I mean. Um, you notice how how they look kind of like different than normal, almost like they were painted with a brush. Um, yeah. I know, I just figured. I just realized that that's kind of like because it's Momo because he's one of the samurai. Hmm. Like it, it's more like traditional looking. Like, for example, like, I remember in Thriller Bark when they would sometimes do the dawn with bones. Or even oh, wait, 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 you mean, you mean the eyebrows? The sound effect. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, okay. The dawn, right next to, right, right on either side of him. You know what's creepy about um, some of the Japanese looks was that the woman in, in, I forgot what era it was, but they used to shave the eyebrows and then paint above them, because it was, it was painting, like, sexy for them. Hmm. Except that that's, like, the design that a lot of horror movies use now, so it's hmm. Japanese horror movies use, so it's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> Times change, um, and then once again, like as Momo's giving his permission, like Luffy's like, "What are you doing, getting all high and mighty about?" <laughs> Luffy. Speaking of, you know, I, I remember mentioning that I always, I thought um, Momonosuke got a little more arrogant. It's like like I knew he was a bit of a brat um, before. Like I always known that, but it seems like that he was a brat before. Now he's a, a he acts more noble, and then he's still a brat, but he's act, he act, he's actually more like a noble. You know what I'm saying? Because he he doesn't have to hide it anymore. Probably. Exactly. So, which makes him a little more of an asshole. <laughs> which is a good thing Luffy's around to keep him humble. Yeah. And as the cat driver goes on to explain, the um, Kozuki family of Wano has for generations been a family of stonemasons. And in their particular case, they're the ones who cr- their ancestors are the ones who created the original pony glyphs. Dun 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 dun! Yeah, it's another big reveal right here. And apparently, it's the way it keeps going on, it sounds like the um, language of the pony glyphs is also known to them. Though it didn't get passed on the Momo because it hadn't had the chance to. You know, it'd be funny if the language turned out to be like some ancient form of Japanese, <laughs> <laughs> like really archaic. Uh, something like that. <laughs> but in um, like I said, the, sk- the sk- skills for that could not be handed down to Momonosuke because um, it ceased to be with Kozuki Oda's generation, which Brooke immediately realizes means that Momonosuke's father is dead. In fact, they, you, we see them remembering, like, apparently in order to boil Odin like an actual, like, actual Odin soup. Yeah, which is pretty brutal. 
and an actual thing in ancient Japan boiling people alive. Yeah. Um, so I remember, I remember, everyone... in, I remember in middle school, like we watched the movie Shogun, Shogun, and they had actually a scene with that. Yeah, I, I, I do know about that punishment. It's a pretty brutal punishment. Um, so everyone cries a bit because you know they cared about him, and then they 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 talk about how he was killed by the Shogun of the Wano Kingdom and the pirate, dun 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 dun, Kaido. Kaido. Um, a lot of people were actually were thinking there was a lot of theories that Kaido was actually from Wano. Um, because of his look and maybe yep. and and his relationship to obviously the the, the, the samurai. past few uh, the samurai and the past few chapters the events of the cha- past few cha- uh, the 20, past twenty chapters or so. Yeah, what um, I of course the qu- question now is like, is he actually from Wano, or is it just kind of a thing where he's kind of adopted their style because he's connected to them? He's connected to them regardless. Yeah, I mean, he, well, first off, he's huge, and a lot of people think that means he's giant, but um, the samurai are pretty huge too, actually. They are, but no, but Kaido is huge. He's like giant level. He like he's like he looks like a giant, so isn't he? Don't know about that. But he's definitely like very big. Well, no remember when he was with uh, the three other pirates uh, the, of the Supernova Eleven? Right. He looked like freaking like the giant beast. And that's just from waist high. Yeah, so he has to be like a giant type of uh, yeah. size. Yep, you would have. Yeah. And so, for, yep. for everyone listening, just brace up because we have one more review going on by this. Along besides just the fact that Kaido occupies the Wano Kingdom. Um, Zoro asked them one last question, and that's to what happened to what did the, their master do? Like, what did Odin do to get ca- executed? And he, assu- he assumes correctly that it's related to why they're on the run in the first place. And it's because, um, as Kinemon explained, it's because Kaido wanted information from them. Their lord, Kozuki Odin, was a member of the Roger Pirates. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Along Although with we pirate- have. We- Sorry? I was just saying, like, along with the Pirate King Gold Roger himself, he completed the arduous journey to the final island, Raftel. Our Lord was privy to the secrets of the world. What are you about to say now? Oh, I was just saying, like, we have met uh, gold, members of Gold Roger's crew before, though. We have met the yeah. Doctor, and we met, um, uh, well, I forgot his name. How, what's the first king? Well, the, the Dark Rayleigh? King. Rayleigh. Rayleigh. Rayleigh, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, like, I mean, yeah. As of right now, we know of at least four members of Roger's crew. We have uh, Rayleigh. We have Shanks, we have Buggy, mm-hmm. and we have um, we have the Doctor guy. I forgot his name. Crocus. Um, Crocus. So wait, actually, I have a question. Have Shanks and Buggy been to Raptor? We're gonna. Ha- I'm gonna have to say presumably on here, unless there's some reason why they wouldn't have been. You know what's really funny is that the the, the second villain we've ever met was already on Raptor. Like he, he's such. A, he's such. He's so important. There's also the fact that we didn't know Crocus had connected to all this when we first met him. I, well, we skipped the. Uh, unfortunately, the fourth kid stuff skipped. No, 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 no. We, I know. Even then, we didn't find out Crocus was part of their crew until um, Rayleigh. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is, yeah, but like, I never, I didn't know anything about Crocus until it was mentioned in the manga again, because the fourth kid stuff skipped him entirely. So That's I true. had no idea who he was. So you missed, to me, you missed out. He had a great gag. Yeah. D- damn you, four kids! <laughs> like. I remember, like, he first meets the Straw Hats, like, they're, um, Luffy's outside of the whale, but they're all inside, because he's actually set himself a nice little Master Rosie house inside of Laboon, first of all. Um, he's actually lounging out in there, it's like, um, Crocus at one point, like, looks at them, it's like, don't go, Usopp tries to intimidate him, like, threaten him with the cannon, but Crocus, like, don't go firing that thing, someone's gonna get hurt. And then Tim's like, who's that gonna be, Crocus? Me! And and then the anime adds on by like doing this like rapid fire thing of like multiple takes of his face before he answers. I guess, let's see if I can find a video for you there. It's pretty hilarious. But yeah, but like I said, we we met Crocus a long time ago, but didn't know. But kind of like Buggy, we didn't know his real significance. Yeah. Unfortunately, when I found out about Crocus, I found out about his connection to the crew. So it was kind of it, to me. It was like, oh my gosh, it's like okay, that guy who I didn't, who I never knew about. Is a, was a member of the, of the Gold Rogers uh, Roger Pirates. Pirates, yeah, yeah, the Roger Pirates. Uh, so it was just it, to me, it was, it was just a little. It was it was like it was just what, what was really disappointing was that I got I got um, that I got that feel like the, the the surprise feeling this the feeling of surprise taken away by the four kids stuff. Like what I don't understand is why the hell did they cut out those arcs? Like is it too was it too violent? The, like, they had they got I don't know like didn't they also skip Whiskey Peak? 
the fact that I barely even know what that's referencing means yes. And I, I think they did. Okay. That could be part of the reason, though, though I wonder how, how did they explain Vivi appearing in the crew? Oh, wait, wait. Um, they did? Wait, Whiskey Peak was the one where they, they met uh, Mr. Five and... Yes. And, that, okay, that, yeah, no, they didn't, did not skip that. That's, that's actually where they jumped to. They skipped huh. everything and went that's right there, so... Um, I have no idea what happened, uh, but I don't know why they skipped the Laboon thing. I don't know. That's why I'm, well, my orientation is really weird because I don't, I don't know these places that was skipped and I, I didn't have the time to go back. So I'm like, oh, where the hell's Laboon? Where the hell is this place? Where the hell's that place? And unlike me, you, you don't know. have the whole damn collection in English. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah. Well, I, anyway, so, um, we, so we met, so we, the fact is that we, we met people who have, pro, who have, who know, um, what happened on Rafto. Like, so it's not, it's not really the most surprising thing of the, I mean, like, it's surprising in the sense that we didn't know that his father was a member of this Roger crew, but in terms of ha finding out there was a person who didn't know about the stuff, it's like, well, we know, yeah, Rayleigh was actually willing to say everything he knew, but, the, but Luffy's like, now, nah. Like, if, technically speaking, the information was always available to them. It was just Luffy himself decided not to take it. And then Robin kind of follows his lead. Yeah, so it, 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 so it, it was like, it, it, the information is never like, um, from a, for like you know like uh, blocked off or like you know some type of like um, act, like nobody on Roger's group is actively keeping it from them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the information's always been made available. It was never blocked off. As they wanted to say. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm a, I'm assuming that uh, he needed the he needed the the guy. To, first off, I'm assuming he's pretty powerful, but I'm, I'm assuming he needed the. Um, Lord Kozuki to do something maybe with that yeah. has to do with the Ponyglis. It's um, possible he, yeah, it's possible maybe because he knew the language as well that he were able to get by with that. Like yeah, I mean, Roger to a point and then he kind of filled in the blanks. Uh, Rod, yeah, Roger heard he listened to their voices, but maybe you could argue that he probably didn't understand it fully. And that we had an educated like scholar like um, Lord Kozuki who knew uh, who probably knew about the stuff. Um, and then well, I won't say scholar, but like past you know knowledge that was passed down or something like that. Um, uh, that helped uh, Roger, you know, do what he wanted to do. Although, didn't it state that the, the information was not passed down? Let me see. Look. Well, the way they explain is, I think it, um, the actual contents of the stone, what was written on them, was not passed down. The message yeah. to create them might have been, and maybe even the language was might have been, or the ability to um, interpret them might have been. Oh, wait, okay. But not um, the actual stones themselves. Okay, the, the knowledge was um, stopped at Kozuki, so that means that Mo um, Momo doesn't have the knowledge, but his dad did. Yeah, but also if you go back further, like, um, when they're first describing this, it's on... Yeah, okay, so in that case, do you, he said, uh, he asked if they know what's written on them, and he said, no, the, ne the knowledge was never passed on. Um, right, so what was written on them is not... Okay, known. what was passed was the means to read and write the glyphs. Okay, right. so basically, like, a super educated form of the O'Hara guys, I guess. Well, not so much super educated, but at least this, well, it was traditional more, for them. Uh, I wouldn't say, oh, well, I was expecting, uh, super, uh, super authentic. There we go, that's what I wanted. Because yeah, they're also, the originals. Um, they're the originals. O'Hara had to study it from a secondary, from secondary sources. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the, or primary in that one point clip. Whereas the Kozuki had a pri primary, like, ways of, uh, uh, so of sources. Yeah. Primary also, sources. Also... Real quick, um, sorry, Nerfie, you, you would not have heard this, but on my end, and it's going to be an recording as well, there's like a little bit of a sound effect just now. I had a thing, I had an update downloading, and it gave it a little sound when it finished. Sorry about oh. that. <laughs> it didn't block, I don't think it blocked out anything you said, though, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that kind of occurs to me with this whole chapter, though, does it seem to me, to, does it seem to you like it does to me that like, they're setting this up so that they'll be f facing Big Mom and Kaido at the same time? Sorry? It just, it seems to me like they're, Oda is setting this up in a way as if we're going to end up dealing with Big Mom and Kaido simultaneously. Yeah, because we have the Sanji thing, and then we have the Kaido thing, and Jack is still looming. He's probably going to come back, so. That's one thing I've seen bantered around as well, if that's a possibility. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like I said, like, these guys, like, the Straw Hats, obviously they have no problem with fighting the Emperors, because they're planning to do so at any rate. But the idea that they're actually going to take down two of them at once, or at least a, a, a assault two of them at once and not necessarily take them down well here's and why I, this is something I wondered as well because remember I, I remember before I was saying wondering if the straw hat grand fleet was going to actually like end up facing both fleets combined Big Mom and Kaido together yeah so but here's the thing I think the reason why this is happening is because he I think Oda wanted to do something different than the, the with the Sushi Bukai because you don't you don't want to have 
you know the you know the formula where you would in, you would one you would attack you would defeat them one by one, mm -hmm. and obviously the next one would be probably be stronger or something like that. Right. And that was kind of like the way with the Sichibukai, guy where he would defeat Crocodile, then he beat Moria, mm -hmm. then he beat. Well, he didn't meet beat, but he he fought you know, fought to Melu Kuma and then Hancock and then uh, fought Don Flamingo. Like it was very um. Like for uh, it was very step by step. But with, whereas with the emperors, you kind of want to change it up a bit, right? You don't want them to be Kaido, like or Mom, Big Mom first, then Kaido, then Blackbeard, and then yeah. you know, it, it, like let's. So look, I think he's trying to make it a lot more interesting by saying, you know, they're not. It's not like one person is um, con conquered once, like the section be like at, uh, closer to Luffy, and then the yeah. Kaido will be like in, you know in the in the section of the ocean afterwards. It's no, they're competing for spots, so they're right. gonna be all over the place. If you think about yep. it. Yep, and also, um, I think. Hang on, what was I gonna say now? Oh yeah. Also, this serve, this can serve to get, but well, you might consider the two less important emperors out of the way quickly. Oh yeah, yeah, Black because Blackbeard is still the biggest one, and Shanks as well. Yeah, but Shanks is the you know the friendly fight at the end type of thing. I think. Yeah. Do you think Shanks knows where the Force Stone is? I wouldn't. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he, again, he was he was there for a lot of adventures, so I'm sure he knows something. I mean, Shanks is. Shane, we, I mean, a lot of time, for a guy who inspired Luffy uh, to become a pirate, we uh, the, the series really downplays his importance in the in the series. You think about it. Yeah, so, I think I'm, we we know almost nothing about how he operates as an emperor for starters. Yeah, uh, we we assume that he, like for example, he comes into um, wherever Luffy I forgot what Luffy Town was called. Windmill Village. Yeah, Windmill Village, and he's just acting like a nice guy. He's actually letting like bandits like ab uh, abuse them, which right. I don't think any of the other emperors would ever do. He's well, we don't, extremely laid back. I don't know if he was ever at the time, but at the same point, you're right. Well, he would have. To, yeah, this, I, I actually crashed out myself, but I think uh, I read somewhere that I think it was implied that he was because also keep in mind that he was at that point he was at his most powerful because he's weaker than he was because he lost his arm. True. So at that point he was at the he was technically at the height of his power in terms of at least physically. So he would have he would be strong enough to be an emperor by then if he's strong enough to be an emperor now. Yeah, his powers have only gone down since then. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, and it, I think, from what I heard, it was just he was just taking a, a vacation. That's that's basically why he was there. So, um, and Shanks is the type of guy who, who plays, who keeps it, you know, who who who, who doesn't play up his uh, status. So I'm sure that's probably it's just his personality for why he lets people like you know do that to him. I mean the same thing with Luffy. Like remember Luffy with uh, Bellamy? He you know he was obviously way stronger, uh, but it, he didn't care. You know he he let the guys basically use him. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. As long as you're not hurting someone he cares about, then that's all. I mean, yeah, so, um, pretty much, uh, and, oh, and keep in mind that he was also strong enough to spar with Mihawk, so he, yeah, definitely powerful enough to be, come in, to be an emperor, um, at least, or at least, at least, uh, Shichibukai level, so, anyway, um, I think that's about it for One Piece, right? Yeah, I think so, like I said, we kind of went through our theories a little bit while we were going through all this, like I said, I so want to see the Pony Glyph fake out ice. I don't think it's. I don't know how likely it actually is, but it would be hilarious if that's actually what it is. Like, they go to they realize the red the road pony lives in danger. They go to check on it and they see like a badly painted green one in its place. <laughs> you use the wrong brush, Luffy. <laughs> or oh yeah, or they get the they get the color wrong for some reason. Luffy can't remember what color it was. <laughs> and or maybe or maybe even better, he likes to draw. He and he signs it. Let me make you sign it. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or when they try to fake the glyphs, they just take like a big old blick stone and just fake glyphs on there. But you, but you can tell that it's like it's like it's like not glyphs at all. It's like some like type of crayon like, drawings. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I, I hope one of it goes through with that one. <laughs> I I so want to see that now that I've come up now we've thought about it, especially yeah. with your your thing on there where he signs it. Like you can't resist it for whatever reason. It's like it's a work of art, right? Uh, he thinks it's a work of art, so of course he wants to get credit for it. Yeah, um, which kind of defies the entire point of stealing it, <laughs> oh, of hiding, of, of replacing it with a decoy, a fake. So um, anyway, so that's it for One Piece. Um, no bleach this week because uh, Kubo's sick. Yep. Uh, uh, so and if and if it weren't for that, I would almost wonder if we were being trolled. You know, ironically, it's funny because um, they uh, last few chapters we've been talking about a guy who uses who has immunity powers. <laughs> Okay, that is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. All right. But yeah, I said, so there's no um, bleach this week, but along with one place, we, we will be recording Inside Mari next. 
And yeah, just like, woo! And as I should tell you, this it's gonna be a good chapter. So hope you enjoy. In the meantime, take us away. Bye.